Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, we're going to be focusing on Chapter 6, all about inequality based on sexual orientation. Here's a little bit of a chapter summary. All societies have norms pertaining to human sexuality. Such norms are based on the assumption that some form of attraction and sexual relationships are normal or appropriate, while others are abnormal or inappropriate. In many societies, people experience a high level of prejudice and discrimination due to sexual orientation because homosexual conduct is considered a form of deviance. Although it's not a crime to be homosexual in the United States, some states have sodomy laws that criminalize sexual conduct between persons of the same sex. In the United States, same-sex marriage is federally recognized. Research indicates that sexual orientation may be partially linked to genetic inheritance, a combination of genetic factors and gender socialization. Symbolic interactionist theorists focus on the process by which people come to self-identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or straight. And some sociologists suggest that sexual orientation is a master status for many gay men and lesbians. Most functionalists believe that homosexuality may be dysfunctional for society if it undermines norms and laws that maintain traditional family structure. Conflict theorists argue that laws relating to sexual orientation illustrate and reinforce the norms and values of dominant group members. By the end of reading chapter six, you should be able to define sexual orientation, gender identity, sexuality, and homophobia, and describe how these terms are interrelated. You'll be able to explain the role of religion and law in establishing norms pertaining to sexual orientation. You'll be able to discuss discrimination in marital rights and parental rights as it relates to LGBTQ persons. You'll be able to describe the ways in which LGBTQ discrimination persists in housing and healthcare despite laws to the contrary. You'll be able to discuss the effectiveness of changes implemented to reduce LGBTQ discrimination in the workplace and the military. Discuss reasons why LGBTQ individuals are more likely to become victims of crime, particularly hate crime, than heterosexual persons. Compare psychological and sociological perspectives on LGBTQ-based social inequalities. And finally, describe how LGBTQ inequalities might be reduced or solved. So let's first do a introduction to inequality based on sexual orientation. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, also known as LGBT, parents, children, and others experience discrimination based on sexual orientation. A preference for emotional sexual relationships with individuals of the same sex, homosexuality, the opposite sex or hetero, um, heterosexuality, or both, known as bisexuality. The term homosexual and gay refer to males who prefer same-sex emotional sexual relationships, whereas the term lesbian refers to females who prefer same-sex emotional sexual relationships. But it's worth mentioning that there's an increasing incident of the use of the term gay to refer to both male and female same-sex attractions. Heterosexual individuals who prefer opposite sex emotional sexual relationships are sometimes referred to as straight. Researchers at the University of Chicago established three criteria for identifying people as homosexual or bisexual sexual attraction to persons of one's own gender, sexual involvement with one or more persons of one's own gender, and self-identification as a gay man, lesbian, or bisexual. Nearly 25.6 million people in the United States, about 11% of the population, have acknowledged that they've experienced at least some same-sex attraction, while about 19 million, or 8.2% of the population, have had at least one same-sex encounter. The U.S. Census Bureau keeps tracks of the numbers in sex, age, and racial ethnic categories, but it does not ask about sexual orientation or gender identity. The Census 2010 was the first to officially ask about same-sex partners and spouses. Because persons could check either husband, wife, or unmarried partner, the Census Bureau estimated that about 581,000 same-sex couples were living in the United States in 2009 but it did not count gay singles. Concerning the transgender population, Census 2010 asked a question about each person's sex and transgender persons were asked to select only the sex with which they most strongly identify. The Williams Institute at the University of California, Los Angeles estimates that 9 million people, about 3.8% of the population, identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. 
that equates to be 1.7 is gay or lesbian, 1.8% is bisexual, and 0.3% is transgender. The 2009 National Survey of Sexual Health and Behavior focused on gay and lesbian populations alone and found the largest percentages, 3.1 for bisexual and 2.5 for gay and lesbian. Most societies have norms pertaining to sexuality. The norms are based on the assumption that some forms of sexual relationships are normal and appropriate while others are abnormal and inappropriate. In many societies, homosexual conduct is classified as a form of deviance that may result in a person becoming a target of prejudice, discrimination, and even death. Extreme prejudice directed at gay men and lesbians is known as homophobia. Homophobia is intensified by the ideology of compulsory heterosexism, a belief that denies, de degenerates, and stigmatizes gay, lesbian, or bisexual behavior, identity, relationships, or communities. Homophobia differs from other forms of bigotry. The unwritten rules that forbid public expression of other prejudices do not apply to denouncing gays with impunity. Strong anti-gay prejudice in the United States is a major impediment to achieving gay rights. Despite programs like Glee and The L Word that positively depict LGBT characters, media depictions often re reinforce stereotypes. When it comes to religion and sexual orientation, it should be noted that most of the world's major religions, including Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Confucianism, and Hinduism, historically have regarded homosexuality as a sin. Buddhism is the only major exception. The Vatican has directed Roman Catholic bishops in the United States to oppose laws that protect homosexuals, promote public acceptance of homosexual conduct, or give gay relationships equal footing with heterosexual marriage. However, many Roman Catholics disagree with the directive, and most recently, our current Pope in the Catholic Church has said that God loves all, including those who are LGBTQ. In 2011, the Southern Baptist Convention reaffirmed the church's official position that homosexual behavior is a sin as dictated by the Bible. In 2011 as well, the 2.1 million member Presbyterian church changed its ordination policy so that openly gay and lesbian persons in same-sex relationships could be ordained as ministers, elders, and deacons if individual congregations wish to do so. The United States Church of Christ and the Episcopal and Evangelical Lutheran churches have also accepted gay and lesbian clergy. Some gay and lesbian people have sought to bring about changes in established religious denominations and their perceptions of the morality or immorality associated with gay rights issues. Others have formed religious bodies, such as the Metropolitan Community Church, that focus on the needs of the gay community. Historically, to be a homosexual has not been a crime, but to engage in homosexual conduct has been viewed as a crime in states with sodomy laws that criminalize oral or anal intercourse between persons of the same sex. In 2003, the Supreme Court invalidated sodomy laws in all 14 states that had such laws on the books. Winning the fight for marital rights. Something to think about is that since 2015, especially with Agrafel versus Hodges, we have now had the right to marry, but it wasn't always that way. Prior to 2015, states had the right to regulate marriage within their own borders. There were six states and the District of Columbia that allowed gay and lesbian couples to enter into legally recognized marital relationships. These states were New York, Connecticut, Iowa, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Some states have passed constitutional amendments or statutes that limited marriage to a union between a man and a woman. Most of them were in the South and within the Bible Belt. The federal government passed the 1996 Defense of Marriage Act under President Clinton that barred federal recognition of same-sex marriage. The Obama administration, however, declared that the Defense of Marriage Act is unconstitutional and that the U.S. Justice Department will no longer defend that law in court. Again, as we know, in 2015, Agrafel versus Hodges allowed the union between same-sex partners and afforded them the same rights as those who were opposite sex. 
marriage, who entered into opposite sex marriages. Cohabitation refers to partners who live together without being legally married. In the United States, many gay and lesbian couples cohabitate because there was difficulty with legal recognition of marital relationships prior to Augerfell versus Hodges. Some cities and states have legally recognized domestic partnerships via civil unions. However, the certain rights only come with a marriage license. And again, Augerfell versus Hodges in 2015 eradicated the difference between same sex and opposite sex marriages. When we look at parental rights, the LGBT community has struggled for many years to gain the same parental rights as heterosexual couples. Estimates suggest that between 8 and 10 million children are being raised by gay or lesbian parents in the United States. Many gay and lesbian couples entered into their current relationships after first having children in heterosexual relationships. These situations can be problematic for non-biological parents who have no legal rights to these children. Other children come into the gay family through adoption. According to the 2010 census data, about 19% of same-sex couples who were raising children reported that they had adopted a child, that they had adopted a child and that that child was living in their home. Only two states, Mississippi and Utah, specifically prohibit same-sex couples from adopting a child. However, 25 states have barriers to adoption because same-sex couples can had difficulty previously in legally marrying. Since then, Many of those 25 states have made it slightly easier for same-sex couples, but unfortunately, the sociocultural stigmas still remain, which makes it difficult for them to be able to legally adopt. Ironically, in some states, gay singles are permitted to adopt children, whereas gay couples face stronger prohibit, <laughs> prohibit, prohibitions. Lesbian couples often choose artificial insemination to produce a child. As more lesbian couples have chosen IVF to become parents, issues have risen about the rights of non-biological parents whose claims are often the least recognized. Among gay men, some couples prefer surrogacy. Foster parenting is another key concern for many lesbians and gays. Many in the LGBT community have experienced discrimination when they sought to become foster parents because of widespread myths about the quote, homosexual lifestyle. Gay right advocates are cautiously optimistic that social norms and laws are gradually changing, yet we still have a long way to go. This is a picture of the transgender bathroom crisis. Up until recently, there was a push to have transgender or non-binary bathrooms that were available to people. While this has become a widespread phenomenon and more social institutions, including schools and federal buildings, and public places like malls are now instituting gender neutral bathrooms, many are still opposing this. The Fair Housing Act does not provide protection against housing discrimination for LGBT people. When we think about housing discrimination, LGBT people have been discriminated against in a number of ways, including by real estate agents who refuse to show them houses in certain quote, family oriented apartment or condo buildings or neighborhoods. Like federal law, most state and local law focus primarily on race, color, and national origin until recent decades when more states and city ordinances began to prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation. The turbulent rental and housing market in the 2010s brought about some changes in the attitudes of landlords, apartment managers, realtors, mortgage loan financers, and others in regard to gay and lesbian tenants and owners. Medical care is not exempt from discrimination based on sexual orientation. A 2010 study found that many LGBT people have been turned away or faced discrimination when they were sick or seeking medical care. The problem was especially pronounced amongst transgender individuals. Currently, doctors in a number of states have had laws protecting LGBT persons against differential treatment or refusal to treat cannot withhold treatment to provide substandard treatment because of a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. The American Medical Association has developed guidelines calling for equal treatment of LGBT patients, doctors, and medical students. Despite laws and ethical guidelines to the contrary, all healthcare providers do not comply with non-discrimination requirements. Openly LGBT individuals 
continue to face widespread discrimination in hiring, retention, and promotion in private and public sector employment. Furthermore, straight coworkers are often aware of discrimination and harassment against LGBT employees at their place of employment. The passage of 2011's Employment Non-Discrimination Act, or ENDA, provides legal protection for LGBT persons in the workplace. Sexual harassment of LGBT workers has also been an ongoing concern in the workplace. LGBT persons also suffer discrimination in the military. In the past, although many closeted gay men and lesbians served, the official government policy was one of exclusion based on the myth that homosexuals were such a high risk because they might be blackmailed by someone who found out about their sexual orientation. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was made a law in 1993, allowing gays and lesbians to serve in the military as long as they did not reveal their sexual orientation and refrain from homosexual acts. Commanders could no longer ask about a service person's sexual orientation. In 2010, both houses of Congress repealed the law. There's been some indication that all vestiges of the policy are far from removed in all branches of the military. However, there's still a military culture that does not accept people that are considered homosexual. Even though don't ask, don't tell has been repealed, there are still persons who fear what could happen to them by people within their unit and their chain of command if it is found that they are same-sex attracted. Furthermore, transgender individuals are fighting for their rights within the military. Under President Obama, they were afforded the rights to be able to seek medical assistance and also work towards transitioning. Under President Trump, those rights were slowly taken away. While not completely taken away, the military is changing their stance on supporting active duty trans members of the military. Hate crimes appear to be the most prevalent where homophobic attitudes and behaviors are tolerated or at least overlooked. Before the early 1990s, hate crimes against gays and lesbians were not acknowledged as such, even though civil rights groups have been tracking growing violence motivated by group prejudice for more than a decade. Few acts of violence against homosexuals were ever reported in the media. In 2009, Congress passed the Matthew Shepard Act to expand the 1969 U.S. federal hate crime law to include crimes motivated by a victim's actual or perceived gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability. Harassment and violence against younger LGBT persons contribute to a hostile environment that harms not only the well-being of those individuals who are physically and emotionally harmed by others or who commit suicide because of their harsh treatment, but also other persons who are aware that many LGBT community members are victims of verbal and physical harassment. They themselves must continue to live and work in unsafe spaces such as schools. Let's look at different perspectives on sexual orientation and social inequality. We'll first focus on the psychological perspective. Some perspectives are based on biology and psychology. According to some perspectives, homosexuality, like heterosexuality, is an ascribed characteristic present from birth that can't be changed through counseling or therapy. Some psychological approaches associate homosexuality with mental processes and childhood experiences. Early psychological approach approaches considered homosexuality a form of maladjustment. Freud believed that humans are constitutionally bisexual, but that as children progress towards adulthood, they move towards heterosexuality, but not everyone makes it down the heterosexual path because it's fraught with dangers and problems. Following in Freud's footsteps, psychologists in the mid 20th century equated homosexuality with mental illness. In 1942, the American Psychiatric Association formally classified homosexuality as a form of mental illness and suggested treatments ranging from castration to electroshock therapy. Homosexuality was removed from the classification in the DSM-3 in 1973. Many psychologists believe that biological and psychosocial factors interact in the formation of sexual orientation. Now let's look at the symbolic interactionist perspective. Interactionist perspectives focus on the heterosexual and homosexual conduct as learned behavior and on the process by which people come to identify themselves as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or straight. 
Most people acquire the status of heterosexual without being consciously aware of it because heterosexuality is the established norm and they don't have to struggle over their identity. But the same is not true of people who identify themselves as homosexual or bisexual. Some sociologists suggest that sexual orientation is a master status for many gays, lesbians, and bisexuals. Master status based on sexual orientation is particularly significant when it's linked to other subordinate racial or ethnic group statuses. Symbolic interactionists have identified several states in the process of accepting a lesbian, gay, or bisexual identity. First, people experience identity confusion. The second stage involves establishing a lesbian or gay identity is seeking out others who are openly lesbian or gay and perhaps engaging in sexual experimentation. Third, people attempt to integrate their sexual identity as gay, bisexual, or lesbian by pursuing a way of life that conforms to their definitions of homosexual labels. A major criticism of this perspective involves its reliance on studies that are based on a relatively narrow selection of people. Finally, we'll look at the functionalist and, cons and conflict perspectives. A focus on the relationship between social structure and sexual orientation is where functionalist and conflict perspectives lie. To functionalist, social norms and laws are established to preserve social institutions and maintain stability in society. Many societies punish homosexual conduct because it violates social norms and undermines the stability of societies. Critics suggest that this approach supports the status quo and ignores a need for new definitions of marriage and family. The conflict approach focuses on tensions in society and differences in interest and power among opposing groups. Norms pertaining to compulsory heterosexism reflect the beliefs of the dominant group members who hold high level positions in the federal and state government, military and other social institutions. Many gay men, lesbians and bisexuals remain acutely aware that many social barriers have not been lifted and that there's not been a major shift in people's attitudes towards homosexuality and bisexuality. Critics assert that this approach fails to recognize that some people who have wealth and power are gay and lesbian, yet take no action to reduce discrimination based on sexual orientation. So is there a solution to inequality based on sexual orientation? Let's first look at the functionalist and conservative solutions to the problem. Functionalist and conservative analysts view gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgender persons as part of the problem rather than as part of the solution for bringing about stability to families and society in the 21st century. They view homosexuality as dysfunctional and assert that it undermines social norms and laws that preserve the family unity and maintain stability in society. Conflict theorists believe that prejudice and discrimination based on sexual orientation are embedded in the social structure of society and are reinforced by those who hold the greatest power and thus are able to perpetuate their own attitudes, beliefs, and values about what constitutes, quote, normal sexual conduct. The best way to reduce inequality is to repeal laws prohibiting sexual acts between consenting adults and pass laws that ban all forms of discrimination against LGBT people. From a symbolic interactionist perspective, homosexual conduct is a learned behavior and people go through stages in establishing a lesbian or gay identity. Society should be more tolerant of people as they come to accept their sexual identity and legal and social barriers that prevent LGBT people from fully participating in society should be removed. Furthermore, young people should be socialized not to use derogatory terms that are related to sexual orientation. I hope that this was helpful for you today. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me via email. Don't forget in the description box below, it's an cr extra credit question where you can earn extra credit towards your final grade. All you need to do is answer the question, take a screenshot, and upload it to receive up to one point. Remember, it's due by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. I hope that this was helpful again, and until next time, take care.